Hello and welcome everybody back to the dumbass class with me, the Sexit Gamer. As we start a brand new tabletop RPG series, this is a Dark Heresy 2nd edition rules, but 1st edition gear. It's a bit of a, a homebrew, but I'm hoping this will, this will help with the problem of acquiring gear in the game. Um, so this is episode 1. Um, I will take you straight into it. So, this is the 41st millennium. It is the, to be precise, the date is M41998. Uh, we find ourselves, uh, where did I put it? That's a good thing. I probably should have opened this up first. It's fine. <laughs> was it the game or was it... VIPs, or was it the mission? Who knows? Um, it wasn't the mission. So, we are in the 41st millennium. Um, the party, our group of inquisitorial acolytes, or soon to be inquisitorial acolytes. They have not been on their first mission yet, but they are aboard a pilgrim ship, the Emperor's Sanctum of Faith. They are currently in the Ultramar Sugmentum. They are on the fringe of the eastern part of the Ultramar Sugmentum. They are currently um, orbiting a, the planet of uh, Lapis. Lapis. Yes, Lapis. It is a shrine world. Um, this world is um, currently evacuating uh, VIPs, refugees, and personnel who are better suited off-world at this moment. Currently, um, the tech priest Dominus Philas is sending his army into the Kaldor um, sector. The Kaldor Sector is a section of space within the Ultramar Segmentum that is um, controlled by the Orc Overlord um, known as the Arc Arsonist. The Tech Priest, known as uh, Phila, wishes to bring uh, his mission of biological cleansing to these worlds and the, Emp uh, the Imperium is allowing him to do so. However, attacking an Orc Empire is only going to stir up a hornet's nest if the operation fails. And given that a certain world is currently in need of more personnel this was a perfect time for movement of vital resources. The pilgrim ship, the Emperor's Sanctum of Faith, has been utilised by the Imperial Inquisition. The Inquisition, a shadowy organisation, basically the KGB, CIA, and all manner of secret polices rolled into one. They deal with the threat from within, the traitors and heretics, from, from beyond. Hang on, is it beyond? From it's within? It's within, without, beyond. Yeah, so from within, the, her the heretics and traitors. Uh, so what was the other one? My brain is... Your, um, without, without and beyond. <laughs> I always remember it differently for some reason. Um, without the foul Xenos um, and beyond Maleficarum, demons. But our acolytes know little of this. They, lo they know little of the Xenos threats that attack the God Emperor's Imperium of Man, which is besieged on all sides. All our group of acolytes 
knows at this moment is that they have been called to the God Emperor's hallowed inquisition to serve. Orbiting the shrine world, the uh, pilgrim vessel collects tens of thousands of imperial citizens. There are other pilgrim vessels in orbit collecting other personnel, relics and supplies that can be better used elsewhere or bringing in supplies to prepare for the orcs savage onslaught repost if the magos dominus should fail it'll take two months of travel for our pilgrim vessel to make it to the sub sector of Mottengard. For six weeks the group will travel. They will spend this time being trained by inquisitorial um, scholars and not scholars, it's damn it, I had the word down. Sorry, I had a very long work day and my brain is failing me now. Um, why can I not remember words today? Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> oh, they're not acolytes. They're not tech priests. Medi they're not mediators. No, who are the who are the scribes in? Who are the scribes in in forty k? Who are the teachers? What's the word for them? Administratum. Oh, that's it. I can click on remember bloody adeptus. That's it. <laughs> No, uh, I can click on the Adeptus. Sorry, I, I have a handout that's got all the inquis all the names of every agency, and I completely forgot I had it. So, uh, they have been trained by members of the Adeptus um, Scholar? No, hang on. The Adeptus... Oh, now I can't say the word. Uh, Scholateria, I believe is the word. Um, they have been trained in the common arts and acts of the Inquisition. These are skills that they will need for their time within the Inquisition. But these are not forbidden laws, these are not scholastic laws, these are just common um, common um, procedures that uh, Inquisitorial acolytes should know, as well as reinforcing some of their lesser traits for those who were introverts they were taught how to speak to people for those who were social butterflies they may have been shown the subtle art of uh oh fuck it bloody another word that's just left my left my head and i had all this like planned out <sighs> The subtle arts of sabotage and um, subterfuge. But after these six weeks, they are given the opportunity to meet as a group all together. This is a chance for them to talk, meet, learn about their current objective, and they will have some time to research these, um, the planet that they will be going to. Uh, do, right. I'm going to keep that one open because I'm going to need that one. Uh, I need the VIPs list. And I need the, need another page. What is it? Subsector. There it is. Okay. So. All of our players have been given decent quarters. These are not particularly spacious. You have a bed which has a mattress, pillows, and they're even of decent thickness, kind of. You have a desk, you have a fold-out toilet and shower. Some of these are luxuries that you may not have had in your old lives. 
For some of you, these may be a massive downgrade. But these have, this has been your home for the past six weeks. But you were told yesterday that there will be no more study. You have essentially graduated your studying. And from this point on, you'll be required to conduct yourselves properly. Manage your time and your resources. Does that mean we don't get to go to the Inquisitorial prom? That is true. That is true. There is no prom. Damn it. No. Once, once, you, once you complete your first mission and you have proven yourselves useful, perhaps then you'll get a party. But still no prom. Mm. You all have been informed that the following day at 1700 ship hours uh, you will be called in for a meeting. Um, you can do whatever you'd like with that day up until that point, but you must be there for that meeting. Um, you are given permission that you can go anywhere within the ship that you'd like. Um, in some, during some times uh, over the past six weeks, you've actually been taken into the um, dining areas where some of the higher class nobles who were evacuated from, um, from, oh bollocks, did I close the name? Oh, did I close the name? What the f from his lab? No, Lapis. Lapis, yes. From Lapis. You were informed that this was to allow you to be seen. Um, some of you would have been upset by the fact that your garb that you came to the Inquisition in has been taken. You no longer have your fine robes, your, um, uh, your Imperial Guard uniform, your Imperial Navy uniform, your Tech Priest robes, all have been taken. You have been given uh, sufficient clothing to um, help you blend in with the uh, surrounding uh, pilgrims, VIPs, um, in some cases just workers, uh, although you've had little interaction with them. But you were told this is, to, uh, this is so that um, if you should meet any of these people again on World, that they would have seen you eating in the same garb as everyone else, you will blend in. There is no reason for anyone aboard the vessel to suspect you of being anything other than very lucky Imperial citizens to get away from a uh, soon encroaching war zone. So, what would you guys do uh, with your time? Would you uh, go and get extra food? Would you go and clean yourselves up? Or would you just relax? Liliana is going towards the back of the ship near the engines. Uh, whatever container is closest to the engines. And she's just gonna hang out there. She likes being near the engine. Just so she can, you know, softly speak to the ship. Uh, <laughs> as you do. Why not? Yeah, I'm, a I'm a void point. Ships are now special. <laughs> Mordecai is probably going to try and get some food and then um, head back to his room. Just try and stay out of the world, uh, out of the way as much as possible. <laughs> uh, Darius is kind of the same. He would be grabbing as much food as he can, like any good guardsman, and uh, holding up in his room. Probably doing PT, but that's about it. He doesn't know these people, so he's a little bit hesitant. <laughs> um, Jenny will most likely be hanging out with her fellow brethren of Mars. Probably partaking in maintenance rites or something like that. 
Just one question. What is the name of this ship? Uh, the Emperor's Sanctum of Faith. Okay, thank you. It is a religious uh, ship. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mordecai just doesn't want to stir things up too much. <laughs> Being on ships is bad enough. At the best of times. Yeah. Dude, ships are great. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Spent my entire <laughs> life on a planet, only for it to kind of disappear after a while. So, uh, yeah. Not used to this. <laughs> it's because you're doing it wrong. Just take a deep breath, stop, and listen to the humming of the ship's engines. You'll be so relaxed. When the Geller fields mm -hmm. fail, you know, be a bit less relaxed. Up. Feel the vibrations under your feet. <sighs> I don't like the vibrations. They're coarse and. No. <laughs> is it wrong that Liliana. They get everywhere. Is, is it wrong that Liliana is um, a female talking about vibrations and how good they feel? Hey. It wasn't until you said it was. Yeah, I know. Hey. I, I'm, I'm trying to kill time here, so I was like, eh, let's, uh, let's stick that in there, why not? I think so, we got some Solanashi stuff at work. So Liliana, um, you do get some some odd looks from the uh from the uh, few tech priests that are aboard the um the uh pilgrim ship. Um they genuinely keep very much to their own and jenny whilst they would actually jenny you would probably struggle because um at the moment you are wearing the robes of actually no you wouldn't yeah th this is something i forgot to bring up i technically have the implant all the implants which are marking of a fully fledged priest Yes, but you are, um, you were given robes of an engine seer, which is a lower class of tech priest. I'm, so I am aware you've, that you've I, been I demoted, not... but they would actually let you in. Um, there would be no reason for them not to let an engine seer into the engine compartment where they're kind of there, um, held up. Um, because pilgrim ships are technically run by the, um, the Ministorum. They, they don't appreciate my contribution to the quest for knowledge. <laughs> they don't. They don't. Um, you do get some um, from the tech priests in there. They're a bit hoity, um, as you might imagine. Um, they're stuck on a pilgrim vessel having to deal with religious... Um, well, they're very religious uh, uh believers of the Omnisire as well um, but they have to put up with a lot more of uh, the Ministorum uh, nonsense so they're a little bit uppity but the other um, engine seers in there um, treat you welcome uh, treat you um, welcome you um, warmly and don't seem to have any problem with you know the fact that you're an engine seer from another world um, they might even pity you because you've come from a shrine world, and they're like, no, no, bring, come, come, sister, come, come. You must return to your Omnisire's bosom. Um, as the tech priests do come and go, they do find it odd that there's this um, uh, Liliana, Liliana. I imagine you're um, a little bit taller and lankier than the average person, because that's normally a symbol, a sign of void, voidborn, is that they're a little um. bit little bit skinnier she she is uh, she's lean she, she's a little bit skinny but she, she had to work out but she is let me find my notes she's actually not that tall she's 175 meters tall 1.75 so 175 meters she's about okay. six feet 
Well, you know, Almost on a on a normal world with normal gravity, you probably would have been a bit under six foot. Um, because that's how, kind of how Voidborns that low gravity all your lives and you know zero g and stuff. Yeah. I'm just gonna uh, round up in her height a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna make her six feet tall. Well, what are you five? Yeah, cool. So you do get some stares um, as you're kind of leant up against the wall, just letting the you know your hands up against the wall, perhaps just feeling the vibrations of the ship, feeling the the different hum um, from your mothership and you know from the ships you've been on throughout your life, trying to get a a feel for it. Like, is this ship happy? Is it? Do you think it's happy? Do you think it's angry or upset? And you're not quite sure. This is a... Well, actually, no, you've been on board for six weeks now. Six weeks plus. So you probably would have got an idea um, that this is a... Oh, actually, oh, I didn't set up my hotkey to... Okay, right, we'll, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, it um it seems to be a happy ship. Everything seems to be well maintained. There doesn't seem to be anything. Um, the tech priests and the uh, the engine seers on board appear to be treating the ship well. They maybe they're trying to uh, stick it to the to the ministerium that you know this may be your ship, but we're the ones who look after it. Um, and you don't you don't feel any uh. Any like harsh vibrations of a gear out of a line for us in the real world? So no, you wouldn't know about gears. You're not a tech priest. <laughs> I mean, what she's mostly looking at is if if the ship's happy, she she feels happy. So she's just happy that the ship's happy. It's more like she feels comfortable and at home whenever her ship is happy. Because to her, ships are alive, and, you know, they have been alive since forever, you know. Strange I hope you survive. Things. I hope you survive. <laughs> so, um, something else that I forgot uh, to mention during character creation. Uh, Liliana, you mentioned that you, you work out a lot. Well, in fact, all of you have been forced to work out a lot um you can all add plus two um sound constitution to your character and add plus two hp and that's oh. for all of you Ooh. that is very nice yeah uh, technically she's always been working out because if she doesn't <laughs> well she's played one she'd be super you know spindly your interrogator wants to give you the best chance that they can give you. And if you fail after that, well, then it was pointless. You will be executed. I need to add this to Albie's sheet. So I need to... Under talents, isn't it? So 119. What was it? Sound constitution? Yes, sound constitution. Uh, it's one of the few skills that you can get... Uh, as many times as you want, um, and it just adds one HP every time you get it. Is it a skill or a...? It's a talent. It is on page uh, 121 of the PDF on the core rulebook for 2nd edition. 131, not 121. Um... That's weird. Mine says one two one for the page, oh. and for the page number, it's one twenty. Hmm. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. And I have fifteen wounds. <laughs> Wait, uh, sorry, spaced out. Sound constitution. All of us are getting sound constitution. Twice. Yep. Twice. Twice. Yeah. Oh. 
So that's Plus two, two wounds. extra wounds, right? Yep. Yep. There you go. Albie's sheet has been updated. Okay, thank you. Sorry for spacing out. No, 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 that's quite alright. Oh, God damn it! Why is it... Oh no, it's... The... Why did it jump to the top? That confused me know. as well. Yeah. Weird. Oh well. That's odd. It's probably because you added it between brackets. They tend to align with brackets first. No. I don't know. <laughs> the sheet is weird. Just, just accept it. It didn't used to do that before. It's always been weird. Don't question it. <laughs> just, the, just carry on the, and ignore. The, the machine spirit might get mad at you, so... You know, just leave it be. So, you've all had some time to relax for this half day. Um, but before long, the time comes for your meeting. You're told where the meeting place is. It's in the... Um, it's in the same area where you were um, first uh, brought on board ship and shown your uh, your tutor, basically. Um, your adept, that's the one. Your uh, adepter uh, scholar, scholar genia, or whatever they're called, um, who went through all of the uh, paperwork with you. Um, it's the same office, only this time whoever goes there first would anyone turn up particularly early standard military practices show up five minutes ahead of time so okay so so we've got a we've got a five minutes would would anyone turn up earlier than that mm. i imagine the tech priest will turn up exactly on on the second like i have planned for every door <laughs> okay uh, let me come over here to the... No, I was on that one. There we go. Yeah, so, Mordecai would probably just turn up pretty much on time as well. Just so, to... Darius, I believe. So, yeah. As you make your way down the, um, the corridor, you can see this time, the first time you came here, there were no guards. There was no one you just knocked on the door and your adept answered and she told you that she would be teaching you all the giving you all the knowledge that you needed well now as you get towards that same door you see there is an individual stood there in black carapace showing no symbols whatsoever um at first glance can you give me a uh, awareness check you can have a plus 10 to it okay you don't notice it you see the individual and you you can see you know you can see hang on did you put a plus 10 on that i mean it wouldn't have made a difference but yeah, yeah, there I is plus ten. I don't. Know, I'm not trained in awareness. Ah, so okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, God. Sorry, I thought you had like seventeen or, or perception, and I was like, how? Is, that can't be right. No, okay. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. You just don't have the skill. Cool. Um, so, I mean, it, it wasn't a. I should remember. This is level. This is the first episode, so not everyone has it. Has uh, their they're full. So it would have been 47. Um, this isn't a difficult test, but you still failed it. Um, yeah. So you you don't see he's just a black uh, uh, carapace armoured figure. Um, you can't see through his visor or anything. You see a small uh, wire that leads up um, from his uh, from his neck to his uh, helmet. He is armed with um, a very nice looking shotgun with two barrels. Um, 
that his shotgun is at ease. It is he's holding it um, with one arm. The other arm is apparently just free, but you would notice that it is the he is stood on. I need to remember how this is with one hand using push to talk. So he's got it in his left hand. He stood on the shut up phone. He's stood on the right side of the door, so his right hand can open the door for anyone um, wishing to go in there. Um, he doesn't um, make any moves as you come up to him, or as you walk up to the door. Okay. Uh, seeing as I don't know this person, or I don't think I know this person, uh, it's going to be a lot of... Um, uh, can I, can I get in? Can I, can I go through, please? Sorry, sir. Can you wait? And he gestures with his hand um, to the side of the of the um, of the of the corridor. It'll be just a minute. That's just a quick nod on the stand your side. Stands to stands to the side. So you may have seen um, one of these individuals before, um, Darius. When you were brought in to the Inquisition, when the first person who you would have met who told you that you were in the Inquisition would have been one of these figures. Um, although you've ne you never knew the one who, you know, snatched you from wherever you were it was given that you would note it you would definitely recognize um or at least have high suspicions that yeah okay these are inquisitorial guards but you're not okay. left waiting long uh, darius only another minute or so goes by and you see the guard's head twitch Sir, if uh, you'd like to go in now, he reaches over and opens the door. He pulls the door outwards. It's a little bit odd. Doors normally open inwards, but... As okay. you look in and go to enter, um, you'll see that the, uh, the table has been um, extended. More parts have been added on to make it larger. More chairs have been arrayed around the table. There's an individual sat there. He has um, a pretty plain looking face. Doesn't really have anything too remarkable about him. He has brown hair, short military style cut. He's going through a data slate and there is a uh, cup of recaf next to him. And you would also see that there are drinks on the table, thermos flasks with cups arrayed. Um, he gestures to you to take a seat, but he doesn't look up at you. He doesn't speak to you. Or there might just be a mumbled as he's reading through. Uh, take a seat, please. As he goes before through. he uh, before he mentions take a seat or anything, I as soon as I see him, I'm foot kicked to the ground and uh, brought my arm up to attention. Uh, still running on military uh, auto uh, auto play basically. Before realizing that I'm supposed to be stealthy about those things now. Would you like to describe yourself? Well, actually. Yeah, sure. As you're the first to enter, would you like to describe yourself? Uh, Darius is a apparently a rangy man. Uh, he's somewhat he's quite tall, but so, still somewhat uh, thin. Rather uh, tan skin with uh, dark hair, dark eyes. Most problem the features probably is pron very pronounced chin apparently. <laughs> um, maybe a guardsman, 
he, he was a guardsman, but uh, he does keep, he does maintain good uh, care of his all of his equipment, so that they do always appear to be uh, in somewhat good nick. In the best of times, and sometimes in the worst of times. Are we standing in uh, what plain plain clothes? Yes, Whatever. plain civilian garb. Uh, you can either have plain civilian clothes or you can have a robe. It's up to you, but it's civilian. Yeah. So plain civilian garb with... I don't... I assume I don't have my rifle with me. So it's not slung over my shoulder. Uh, you don't have your equipment yet. Um, yeah. So far, you've had all your equipment taken. Uh, a few mementos from your past life would have been acceptable for you to hold on to. Um, if you did have a particular weapon that you had a fancy for, um, they would have told you that they would try to see what they could do about acquiring it. Um, but as you salute, um, he does look up and he does take notice of that. He has these l quite lovely blue eyes. Um, oh, hang on, wait a minute. He yes, he has blue eyes. Um, but he doesn't say anything more. He looks up, takes notice. Yeah, there's a small smile there um, before going back to his data slate. Okay, I'll uh, take a seat and stay quiet until spoken to. Let me take a look around the room just. Uh... It's a very. Uh empty room there's nothing really of note there is a doorway behind where he sat um you would make out that there is definitely an item leaning up against uh his side of the table you'd see a large um silver shape that comes up you can't see the whole item because it's hidden behind the table but it definitely looks as if it's a shield or some such, maybe a weapon, but a, nothing that you've ever seen before. Um, eh, maybe a shield. Okay. I can't remember if it has braziers on it. I'm going to say it doesn't because it seems quite dumb to have. I think it does have braziers on it all the time, actually. <laughs> eh, this one's been modified. It doesn't. That'd be quite okay. obnoxious. Um, but yeah, there's there's recaf there in uh, in thermos flasks, and there appears to be small uh, nutrient juice packets um, and other such bog standard um, drinks. Probably the only luxury on the table is the is the uh, the recaf. The luxury to a guardsman. So after a couple of minutes have passed, the rest of the party would slowly begin arriving. Um, I believe we will go for... Um, we will go for Mordecai. No? Yeah, Mordecai. Mordo, is that your character's name? Yep, that is that okay. is indeed his name. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So the time is fast approaching um, for you to be at your at your meeting point. Um, so you make your way down the corridor, much like you have done before, and you see this black carapace armor individual. Um, can you give me a awareness test? Um, if you don't have perception, uh, sorry, if you don't have awareness, add plus thirty. If you do. Add plus ten. Okay. And may I use Cynescience as well, or...? You can. Um, at the same bonus, or no bonus for that? There'd be no bonus for that. Okay. You use Cynescience, um, you look into the ether and you can sense that there are psychers aboard. You can sense one individual who's heavily shielded. You imagine this would be the navigator. It seems the ship, even though he's shielded, 
Uh, actually, he's not in. You're not in. No, you are traveling through the warp. Um, although he is shielded, um, you can sense that there's a psyche, a weird psyche there. Um, you can also sense um, the presence of the Astra Telepathica um, aboard the vessel. I'm not entirely sure how many how many per ship. I believe it's a minimum of one Astra Telepathica per ship. But the bigger the ships, the more they have. So. I'm going to say for a pilgrim vessel, it's just one. Um, so a navigator, an astropath. Um, you sense another psyker aboard sh the ship who is definitely astrotelepathica as well. You can, you can tell that from their, um, the way that their mind works, the way that all astrotelepathica psychers have been trained to, um, to, uh, lessen their psyche their psychic imprint upon the warp so that they are you know, not defenseless like a uh, a rogue psyker is um you're it's further to the back of the ship but moving well i keep forgetting how bloody big these vessels are in 40k um they're huge <laughs> so yeah there's another psyker quite close by um approaching um but again they're they're astro telepathica they're not a rogue or anything like that um you too do not notice that anything about the carapace individual um as you approach the door he doesn't wait for you to speak to him he opens the door and uh make your way in sir thank you he, he kind of says with a bit of almost trepidation in his voice kind of not really used to big people in power armor telling him where to go. <laughs> um, and he'd just walk in. Um, and kind of probably take a seat if, if there was one offered to him. Yes, as you enter, um, the uh, individual who is sat across uh, at the other side of the table looks up with these piercing blue eyes. Um, looks at you and uh, take a seat and just gestures anywhere um malachi uh would you like to describe yourself as you see another individual sat facing um well sat on your side of the table uh oh sorry <laughs> um well he's just a no he's fairly tall he's um well built guy um but he's probably dressed in in civilian clothes but a bit more sm smartly than your average civilian um it's kind of just a ho a holdover of of where he's from really uh smart and and ready to almost do some um like science or 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 in in our world like a school um like that sort of that sort of um clothing on him and he has on it on his waist he just has a a gold belt with a, a a scabbard but it's just completely empty at the moment um he's got again he's got brown hair and and blue eyes but not quite as piercing i imagine as as the inquisitor <laughs> So you you walk into the room. You take a seat. Uh, there are drinks there for you, um, and before too long, um, mm -mm -mm, time. Okay, uh, before too long. Uh, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll say this. Uh, no, we'll go with Jenny first. So, Jenny, exactly on the time. Sorry, sorry, Jim. Uh, exactly on time, you make your way to uh, the office that you were told to go to. Um, like the others, you see a black cladded individual um, in carapace armor. Give me a perception. If you have perception, plus 10. If you don't have, uh, sorry, no. If you have awareness, plus 10. If you don't have awareness, plus 30. 
I do have awareness. <laughs> I I am still I am still quite distracted by the fact that for all intents and purposes I have been demoted uh, by actually, people me... outside of the Mechanicus. Actually, I do have to. Ask, do you have eyes? <laughs> you barely <laughs> notice there's a guy there. I do have eyes. <laughs> Just gonna bump into him. Oh, hey. So. Yeah, you don't actually notice him. Um, you walk up to the door and uh, you're kind of, like you said, you're you're a bit depressed that you've been demoted. You're a bit angry about the, you know, you feel like, you know, you deserved, you worked hard to get to your rank. And to have it taken like that, it's just got you in a bit of a huff. And uh, you just walk straight past. You don't even notice him uh, as you open the door and walk in. Apparently he's a camel look. Um, would you like to describe yourself as you enter? Uh, sure. So Jenny is obviously a woman. Uh, spooky. About meters, meter seven tall. Uh, short blonde hair. She looks fairly tan. She's got these quite intricate facial tattoos that almost glow with a slight blue hue. At least most people think they're facial tattoos. Okay. You Necron? <laughs> Wrong color. <laughs> you also forget, Jenny. You always forget. And I, I assume Hector is with me. <laughs> Yes, I'm quite pissed about that too, Hector. As you as uh, you walk in, um, the gentleman across the table looks up at you and take a seat. The rest of your party should be here soon. He takes out his chronometer and he gives it a, he gives it a you know a little ding. But it seems to be on time. A minute goes by, and Liliana, you turn up. You're kind of jogging a little bit. You wanted to, to be close to the vibrations of the engine, which meant you had to run to get here. And it was a good workout, but you realised that all those tech priests doing their uh, rituals to open the door has made you a minute late. Uh. Yeah, although I'm a minute late, as soon as I approach the room, I'm gonna stop. I still have some sort of a pep on my step. I'm running my ha my right hand on the the whole of the ship as I'm going. Uh, I don't know if I should keep the awareness I already used, which was 33 out of 40. But as soon as I get to the door, I'm gonna give the guy a short bell and say, "Forgive me, early. I'm late, but may I still come in?" Okay, so as you approach the uh, the black carapace figure um you would notice as you quickly give him a, a once up and down that he actually does have sig uh, signig uh. Oh, i'm not gonna be able to say the word he has a uh, sig <laughs> insignia? insignia that's all he has an insignia on him he has on his um on the sorry bottom of his carapace there's a small piece of fabric that runs around the carapace uh, connectors and very very faintly is um, stitched in the stylized eye of the Inquisition um, but you may have known this already as one of these uh, individuals was the one who brought you in the Inquisition he looks at you and opens the door by all means um, go ahead I uh, should say thank you. Give him a, another short, cautious bow. She's smiling the entire time. She'll go into the room. Uh, Liliana is she's tall for a woman. Well, not super tall, but she's tall. Uh, she's pale, very pale. She's you can see that she's a bit thin, but she does walk out a lot, so she's lean. 
uh, that you can see on the left side of her face, on her cheek, there are two scars coming down from well, upper cheek down to her chin. So she has ashen hair, quite well, quite white hair, and she has violet, bright violet eyes. She's gonna look at everyone in the room. She's gonna give a small bow, say, "I'm sorry, I'm late. It is nice to meet you, everyone." And she'll take a seat. And as soon as she takes a seat, she's gonna look at the host, give him another bow. I apologize once more. So, she's gonna... Liliana. Um, now, I can't quite remember from your backstory if it was this individual. Um, you would probably not have seen his face at the time, but you may recognize the shield that is currently le well, the head of the shield that is leaning up against the uh, table on his side. He looks up at you, um, and there is a smile on his face as he gestures, uh, take a seat, one more, to go. Oh, yeah, um, there's one more thing about Liliana that people can probably see. She has a basically a dog tag. But it's not a dog tag, it's basically a, a, a ship dog tag for, because she's a voidborn. And she also has a pendant, which is polished a uh, piece of hole. Ship hole. Uh, she will smile at the man. She knows he is the one that saved her, but I don't think she talked to him. No, I don't think there was a uh, uh, interaction there, but you did see, uh, you did meet him briefly, and you did uh, take note of some of the equipment that he had, um, which would probably be your number one uh, recognizer. Um, but as the meeting is a minute behind, um, Ezio. Sorry, I was looking at your name to go and I know how to fucking say that, but when I look at it, it's, it I should say it differently. No, Ezio. Um, you were informed to be at um, the meeting with your, basically your inquisitorial um, representative, agent, handler, something along those lines. Um, yeah, handlers perhaps. You are um, a recruiter. He's not a recruiter. He's an acolyte. But for you guys, he's. I mean, more... it's backstory-wise, is he or is someone else? Oh, he—he's not the one who recruited you personally. Um, as right. you make your way to the meeting, um, you got held up. Um, there was some uh, some woman who was hopping and skipping down the hallways rubbing her hand along the walls and tech priests were getting in the way and you kind of just stepped back and let these actions play out in front of you before moving on yourself um this has meant that you're about a minute behind you're two minutes late um so you kind of get a jog on and you make your way to the office um as you get to the office you see an individual in black carapace he has a very nice double-barreled shotgun uh, in one arm, in his left arm, and he is waiting at the door. Um, this does look like one of the individuals who recruited you. Um, can you give me a perception test, uh, sorry, awareness test? If you have awareness as a skill, add I a plus do. 10. Okay, just add a plus 10. Ooh. Okay. Five successes. So as you like jog up to this uh, to this individual, and you look him up and down the black carapace, looking particularly well maintained. The shotgun you can clearly tell is not a double-barreled shotgun, but is a twin combat shotgun. Um, the individual is quite large, um, like. Uh, stocky not tall um but you would notice as you look down there's a small part of um of fabric that goes along the bottom it's basically trim uh 
along his carapace. You can see a small uh, stylized inquisitorial eye sewn into the um, material at the bottom. As you approach um, and you get a good look at, at him, he kind of puts his head to the side and opens the door. Uh, they've been waiting for you. He opens the door. I not enter inside. Okay. As you enter, um, there are four individuals sat at the table who are facing away from you. You can only see the backs of their heads. Uh, there's one individual who sat facing you. He has short brown hair, uh, military crop, military cut. He has um, really uh, piercing blue eyes that are really quite lovely. Um, quite a bland face though, nothing really um, out of the, uh, there's nothing really noteworthy about his face. Um, but he does wear, I um, can't remember if I said before, but he is wearing um, a very nice clothing. Uh, he's not wearing armour of any type, but I'll give you all and I'll uh, let, um, I'll let your five degrees um, come through onto this as well. You can all see that on his collar, he has a stylized uh, eye uh, of the Inquisition as well. Um, he gestures for you. Please, Do take I a seat. Do I him from somewhere? Uh, no, you don't recognise him. Um, you, no, you were picked up by a black parapist individual, like most of the party. Um, all of the party, in fact. You would notice that there is a silver, a big silver object leaning up against the table. Maybe a shield, possibly a weapon of some sort, but you're not entirely sure. I'm sorry. Can you... No, Discord. We'll be right back. We're having some technical malfunctions. Um, hopefully, Discord will resolve its issues. Ah, I think it Hello. has. Hello. Hello. That's uh, uh, has Discord fixed itself? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Good stuff. Yay. I think Discord was trying to get possessed by a demon there. I think it was. I think it was. It felt it felt power test. <laughs> Press one option for Discord. Uh, did you all hear? Um, where did you lose the me? The last thing I clearly understood was when you go pick me up, and I was picked up by Black Carapace. Yeah, uh, you would see that there's a silver object leaning up against the side of the table. Um, from where you are and what you can see, maybe it's a shield, it might be a weapon of some sort, but you're not entirely sure. Um, you take a seat. Um, there are uh, flasks of recaf and uh, bottled nutrient paste. No, sorry, not bottled. Uh, little sachets of nutrient paste um, fluids. And as you all sit down, another minute or so goes by as he goes through his data slate before he places it down on the table. So, you have all finished your training. I am Acolyte Ted. That is all you'll know me as, for now. Can you repeat that? I think I misunderstood you. He is an Acolyte and his name is Ted. All right. Ted. Okay. I am uh, the great acolyte, Ted. <laughs> I understood something else for a moment. You have all been brought here for your skills, for your ability to serve the God Emperor. Whilst you have been brought into the Inquisition, you are not true agents acolytes or throne agents until you have proven your worth as we all had to your mission will be fairly simple for your first mission at the very least 
my master has requested that you all earn 250,000 thrones. Now, this may seem like an unachievable goal for some of you. For others, this may seem like a pittance, a drop in the ocean. But you have to do this on your own. The Inquisition uh, will provide you some funds. My hand. Yes. Is it 250k total or each? Total. So, 50k each. Total. Alright. If you wish to divide your team like that, then I will execute you now. My master's master has told me that if any of you show any sign of treason, I am to put a bullet in your head, or to chop off your head and prevent, uh, pre uh, present it to my master. This is not a threat. It is a promise. Look to the left and look to the right. These are your brothers and sisters from here on out. These are the people you will trust with your lives. And if you do not, you may survive your first mission. And I will kill you. That is as simple as it is. No matter your grievances, no matter your hatred for the organisations that you were once in, you will put them aside. You are members of the Inquisition now. Not the Mechanicus, or the Ministorum, or the Munitorum. We are one here. And my master has instilled that belief into me. And I shall do the same to you. 250,000 thrones is the minimum you must acquire. You will have six months to do this in. But this is not your only mission. This is just the first. He brings out a device. It's quite a large device. He has to lift it out of his, uh, out of his um, desk with two hands. He places it onto the table and pushes it forwards. He hits a button. A holographic projection of the system you're about to enter is shown. This is the subsector of Mottengard. It zooms in again, and you can see. Uh, actually, everyone, give me um, scrutiny perception tests uh, with a plus twenty. Okay. Ooh. Why did I not take scrutiny? Another permutation of a hundred. Wow. That's another 70 something. So, let's have a look. So, two of you. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Three of you. Three of you get it. So, God damn it, that name is going to constantly get to me. I don't know why. Ezio. So as you look at uh, the image that comes to you, uh, you would see that there are at least three planets um, in this area, in this hologra hologrammatic, uh, holographic map. Um, but sadly, you don't notice anything else. Um, Mordecai, you too notice the planets, but you don't really get much else. Actually, saying that, you've got two degrees, no, you've got three degrees, because you get plus one for succeeding. Yeah, so it's three degrees. Um, so actually, uh, I've only just said it, and I've just, like, my brain has just blanked again. Um, Ezio? Yes, Ezio. Um, Ezio and Liliana, you would both see this. Um, the fact that there are... Uh, sorry, I, I actually lied. There are four planets in this subsector. Uh, you would see that, uh, uh, Mordecai. 
Um, but you two also notice that there appears to be a lot of debris um, surrounded by one of the uh, one of the planets. Uh, so just outside of one of the planets, there's an awful lot of debris. Um, you don't see it clearly, but there's definitely something around the. Would I reckon? Would I know a potential cause? No. No. You. I mean, I would... is it debris as in ships or debris? You don't know. As in... I mean, this is a 40k holo hologram, so details are not exactly. Lots of noise. Yeah, and you're not a tech priest, and you don't have the. Um, you, I believe, you don't have the uh, required background to really know. Oh, that's that's ship debris. Let me have a quick look. No, you don't. Um, Wouldn't I know it after no. many more? You're you're an assassin. I would give if if Jenny had got three degrees, I would have let her do a logic test. To work out if it's asteroid, if it's space debris, if it's uh, for an assassin, um, no. And it's a 40k hologram, so it's not the best imagery. It is not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. You can see there's debris and there's something around there, perhaps something to note down, something to ask when you're on world. Who knows? Another quest lead for another day, perhaps. Um, the hologram zooms in. <laughs> the hologram zooms in. Um, this is the primary uh, biosphere of this subsector. It is the world of Santa Fe. It is a hive city. It is a hive world predominantly. It has a toxic climate, but it is not so toxic that rebreathers and proper survival equipment could not get around it you will be heading to the hive city of santa fe this is where you will spend your time investigating and creating your income shall we say the inquisition does not care how you go about this if you wish you may assassinate nobles, if you wish. You may sell drugs, open up a gang, prostitution. We do not care how these funds are created. As long as you do not do anything heretical, as long as you do not cause the population to riot, then we do not care. The world is... The world was run by, a, by the planetary governor. However, some 80 years ago, he was purged. He and he alone was purged for private dealing. You do not need to be made aware of this. The Inquisition cleared that problem. However, his line still continues to rule the world, is now under the planetary governess. But to ensure the world's compliance, the Department Munitorum placed a rather important person on this world. The world itself is run by a Lord Commander Jack von Las Sebastian Ray. He is a Lord Commander. He is one of five strate uh, strategic. No, he is one of five in the Ultima Segmentum. Him being placed on this world essentially means it is under his command, but he has been asked to monitor the nobles and the governess. The governess herself is. Uh, Ella Della Rosa Mentori. Basically, Ella. Um, yes. Um, do I embarrass myself before the world with my spelling? No, I'm going to. I'm going to keep on to that shr that shred of of of. Discord is also a possibility. 
<laughs> no, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it in Discord. Sorry for those of you who are who are listening, but my my uh, my manly soul I mean, can only take it's so much. All right, I guess. Also, remember, there is no wrong way to write on it. Yeah, you'd be surprised. You'd, you'd be, be surprised. surprised. Yeah. I mean, if it's wrong, <laughs> if it's entered in the uh, register that way, that's the correct spelling. Uh, true. That's what I stick with. Yeah. That's what I stick with. Yeah, that's true. But when you have people saying, oh, yes, so I'm Shaniqua with a silent, like, fuck off. <laughs> Let's <laughs> not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there are other names, it's... but that just came to mind. Use that example. Shavon. Hmm? <laughs> So, um, oh, don't start with that. The planetary governess, as far as we have been able to acquire, has kept to the correct way to run a hive city with as little interference as possible. However, we would like you to keep your ear to the ground to see if there are any stirrings within the nobility. Whilst you are on world, you will be cut off from the Inquisition. We will not assist you. However, you will have one contact on world. He is a press ganger. Uh, and his name is Malcolm Ganael. He is on world. Well, he works for many rogue traders, and in a month's time, once you have reached the world, the planet, a rogue trader ship will be entering system, given the warp. Hopefully within a month. This ship will be undergoing some maintenance and will be acquiring new crew. This ship will be your next contact and once it reaches the planet you can, if you wish, make contact through the press ganger. The ship's captain has been... he smiles at this he has been told that he is to be of a use to be a useful asset for the Inquisition. Thus he will assist you, but he has been told that this is your mission. But should you need certain equipment, personnel, he will be able to assist you there. You'll each be given You'll each be given 500 thrones. This is seed money. It was 500, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you'll be given 500 thrones as seed money. Each. This is for each of you to invest however you wish to get the ball rolling. You'll also be given 250 thrones as your personal expenses. But keep in mind, spending inquisitorial funds on personal belongings is highly frowned upon. The money that you earn for the Inquisition, given the means that you have been, that have been opened to you, he smiles again at this and looks at all of you, spending that money on personal gains will have consequences. I suggest if you are going to do this, you make sure that you have a good reason and explanation for my master. Um, I raise my hand. Yes. <laughs> so, if we want to get some better equipment for something we are planning to do, do we need to write the permissions beforehand or afterwards? If you're spending inquisitorial money, as in, if we find out that you have been selling drugs, 
and then you are spending that money on getting high, enjoying yourselves, buying equipment, there will be punishments. If you wish to spend your thrones, your 250 thrones, on equipment, that is up to you. If you go hungry, that is also up to you. The seed money is there as an investment. If you cannot prove that it was a worthwhile investment, the Inquisition, you will pay for it. Either through thrones or through blood. But you do not have to write to me. However, you can write it on these. He opens up his desk again and he takes out one by one five massive bricks. These things are ginormous. They're not bricks, they're, they're rectangular bricks. Uh, he hands one to each of you. Um, as you open them up, you would see that these are technically four data slates. They are big, bulky, and heavy. You can add a data slate to your inventory, and you can add on double the weight of a normal data slate, which I mean, I, I think it weighs one instead of half. Um, but Jenny, you would notice this immediately as you open the data slate. You turn it on, and there's a blue screen and an error code that comes up. Oh, <laughs> God. As the error code force millennium, there's blue screens of that. As the error code comes up, um, the others look at this in bafflement. They have no idea. You can read this somewhat. It is in binary after all. Um, it's very confusing. It definitely, even to you, reads as an error. But it says error with data connection port. Data connection port? You look at the outside of this thing and you're like, there's no data connection port on this hunk of junk. And as you examine the back and move it around, you notice something on the back. Something feels hollow. And as you play with it, you know, jiggling it and moving it, perhaps you hum a canticle to the machine spirit to grant you access. It comes away. It's difficult, but there's a hidden compartment in there. Um, Jenny, you still have human hands, don't you? I do. Okay, uh, they would have known this. So as you look um, into the uh, back of this hidden port, you see that there's a small needle in there. You're not entirely sure what this is, but uh, the um, acolyte Ted has noticed. A biometric recognition system of some capacity? Indeed. If you would please show your comrades and prick your finger. As your comrades are all shown and oh, oh, okay. Um, they all prize the compartment open and you all jab your fingers. It's a small, tiny little prick. It doesn't hurt. A small amount of blood is drawn. Um, but the blue screen disappears. It doesn't say anything on there. It says um, access granted. And once opened, Jenny, you would immediately know this is a master crafted data slate hidden within uh -huh. a poor housing. Most interesting. You have the ability to take um, uh, photos with your data slates. You also have the ability to take very, very short pick feed. Um, so essentially, you could, if you had a Xenos weapon, you could do a five second pick feed footage and attach that to a document. Um, unfortunately, it, it has basic Bluetooth, so you guys can send documents in between yourselves um, but it can't like connect to the inquisitors or the acolytes stuff in orbit can hector carry it <sighs> i believe yes, a I am servo asking if my servo skull can be my selfie stick i believe 
um, a servitor can carry something of a weight of one. So I believe it can. My selfie school. You put, you're gonna put a brick on top of your servo skull. It's gonna struggle to fly for the rest of the Not game. Not on top of. Hector's got tiny little arms. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we. Yes, yes, he's gonna be struggling the entire game to carry um, luggage. You guess you can sweat it, would. Nice, you monster. It's like Hector. Hold this for me. <laughs> oh, he's like struggling. <laughs> Oh god, Hector, it's only a kilo. I'm done with Hector. Look up your act. Isn't it two because it's in the, the yes. case oh, it's basically uh, a brick? Data slit is a half normally. Okay. It's half normally, yeah. Oh, okay. These data slates should provide you with adequate security. And if anyone does try to check, they should not know about what? Your comrade noticed. Try to keep them away from the Adeptus Mechanicus. Though they shouldn't, as long as you do not do anything to uh, gain their gaze, they should not bother you. Are there any questions at this time? Leanna's gonna put her, head, uh, her hand on her cheek. Uh, she's gonna lean on the, the table and she's gonna look at. Uh, she doesn't know. That it's Ezio, his name, but he's gonna look at Ezio just waiting. Ezio Auditore, <laughs> Master Assassin! No, his back name is not Auditore. Elditore. But, but I do have a uh, fast, does he ask anything? Yeah, it's just ev all, everyone just looks at him. <laughs> uh. I lost the train of thought. What was the question again? Are there any questions at this time about <laughs> your mission? Um, not for me. This is the point where uh, Darius realizes he's not in the guard anymore because mm -hmm. asking questions gets you shot. <laughs> um, he oh, actually... Yeah. Um, I don't know if we have the clearance for it, but. Do we know what we're working for? No, you do not have the clearance. Um, guardsman. All right. You may ask your questions freely. Uh, he kind of. Darius kind of sits in the sit in, sits in the spot and is uh, he's already kind of sitting out of tension. Now he's kind of shot up a little bit more and uh, looks a little bit puzzled and looks around the room. Uh, no question, sir. He nods, uh, as I suspected. Well, this mission should be simple enough. My master would like you to work on your skills to hunt down anything that may be on world. Failing this, if there is nothing for you to investigate, simple enough to make thrones on a hive world when you have almost complete authority. If you are to kill any PDF forces, I will expect a report. I want to know why, I want to know how. If we find out that you are just killing them to loot them, whilst not exactly against the power given to you, it would not look well upon you. Know this, we do not want you killing uh, Imperial citizens to acquire their equipment. But other than that, you do have free reign. But again, if the PDF should find out, they will try to stop you. You have no, no authority to them. If we find out in six months' time that you have spent six months locked in a PDF cell, well, you will remain there or you will be in a penal legion. 
the next time you awake. If there are no more questions, you have free access to the ship's um, chronicalarium. Although the ship does not have forbidden information, they will have some on the system that you are going to. Prepare yourselves as best you can. You'll note that you have all been given civilian garb. Well, now you'll be given your arms. And at this, he hits a button on his data slate, and behind him, uh, a door opens with a servitor behind it, with a carrying a massive crate. The crate is put down um, on the floor within the within the office. Your equipment will be here in the box. Your thrones will also be in the box. He stands up and looks at all of you. I hope to see you all again in six months' time. And I truly hope the God Emperor smiles upon you and that you are able to achieve all of your goals and reach the full potential that I and my master have seen in you. He does a, um, he actually does a guard salute um, with the Imperial Aquila. Um, which is kind of odd because he outranks you. The God Emperor protects. May he protect you on your journey, Acolytes. Darius does the same, kicking whoever's beside him. Mordecai tries to replicate it, but he's not really used to it, so he probably gets it a little bit wrong. Uh, the Astra Telepathica do have their own. Um, every group has their own salute uh, basically um for the, I return to guard salute for the uh, potentially the guard is the half aquila um on your chest um for the astra telepathica i believe theirs is like the uh Ministorum, which is the full aquila but i think yours is the full aquila across the heart whereas the uh Ministorum's is the full aquila above the head that makes it the easiest. It's just a cog. Yeah, and Tech Priest is the cog. But then the cog's actually now got multiple ways because of Mechanicus. Yeah. Fair enough. Leon is not going to do any uh, uh, gesture from any organization. She's just going to bow and say thank you <laughs> as a civilian would. Because she's now technically supposed to be a civilian. Jenny will do the Mechanicus symbol. And yeah. still mumble under her breath about the humiliations of derankment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rather than do the Astra Telepathica, Mordecai is trying to copy the one that Darius the is. Acolyte is doing. Yeah. He looks at you all, <laughs> smiles, turns around before turning back to his desk and picking up a large silver shield before leaving the room with the uh, servitor. The servitor walks out of the same door behind uh, you all, uh, sorry, in front of you all, um, and leaves. You are all in the room alone with a box. <clears throat> uh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be the first? <laughs> Lillian is going to start humming and she's going to start, you know, I approach the <laughs> Moving towards box, the box and I look at it. Do I spot anything yeah. on the outside? No, it's just an equipment Lillian, box. Lillian's not going to look at anything, he's just going to open the box. <laughs> oh my god. Inside you find all the equipment uh, that you all asked for. Or that you were forced Ooh. to take. Yeah. <laughs> Or they take it off me. Lillian is going to clap her hands and say, Ooh! Yeah. Look! And Jenny she's going to grab gonna her stuff. Jenny quickly spirit away the sacred unguents and everything Mechanicus. And of course the Lazalock. 
Darius just picks up the rifle, grabs the spare, uh, what was it? Uh, grabs the spare rounds, grabs the stiletto, and uh, starts looking them over, making sure they're in good nick. Mordecai reaches in, just pulls out, kind of tattered almost, um, old saber, and puts it into the scabbard and picks up his his pistol and um, stows that away with mu- much less reverence than he did the the saber. I don't remember. Was the Savitas a pistol or was it a... Uh, it's a pistol. It's a pistol. It's a pistol right? Yeah. yeah. Leanne is just going to take the pistol. She's going to spin it, put it uh, on her person. She's going to take a saber. Play it around, play with it a little bit, and then she's gonna put it in the sheet. So, for those of you out there who are wondering, they have the the finest equipment that the Inquisition could afford. All civilian shit. All the stuff that the guardsmen would probably turn their noses up. Uh, as a little, ooh, why did that? Ooh, that went a long way. Is my mouse having a moment here? I think it is. Uh, so, for a quick reference, um, their weaponry, which I don't think any of them took, um, the most expensive item there was a gun that was 95 thrones. I don't think any of them took. Uh, they have the most standard of standard equipment. Can I, if I go to show player, oh, it worked! The soon raccoon can see all. Um, so <laughs> for the stream, you can see um, they have shocking equipment. I have allowed some of the players to trade in um, the equipment to acquire essentially a different type of weapon, which is in the same um, the same bracket of shit. Uh, cheap, nasty, uh, disposable. Um, in some cases, cannot be reloaded. Um, as I for prefer the, the term robust. Well, the civilian LAS pistol cannot be reloaded. It can be recharged, but you can, there's nowhere to put another clip in. It, it's fully installed. Yeah, that's an affront to a uh, guardsman. He, <laughs> needs to have, he needs to have clips he can uh, requisition later. Without the requisition officer knowing. <laughs> right, I you mean those improvised grenades? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I loved seeing that. I loved seeing that. Oh, I was like, really? So you can make a grenade out of, hmm. It's in the law, but not in Dark Heresy it's Second. Explosives are very easy to make. Yeah, but apparently, according to the real world physics, the uh, Lasgun ammo pack is like a hundred times better than an actual Lasgun shooting. They that make makes sense. <laughs> I mean, consider it this way. It is 60 Lasgun shots you release in one shot. Yeah. yeah. Well, technically it's uh, 120, because I think you need two. You need two? Yeah, but we were talking one pack, right? No, to make, I think to make a improvised explosive, out of a las gun, I think you need two of them. I might be wrong here. Yeah, you need to. Then it's 120 shots. Yeah. Anyway, it's a ridiculous amount of las gun mm-hmm. shots you release in one time. Yeah, yes. a lot of power. Um, Let's so keep it at that. You gather up your equipment, check it over. Uh, for those of you who have solid projectiles, you do have three clips overall of bullets. Uh, one in the mm-hmm. gun, in a magazine, and then some some spare ammo in your pocket. Don't uh, don't fall over. Don't smash into anything whilst it's jingling around in your pocket. Uh, <laughs> Minus five still. <laughs> After uh, Oliana sheaves her sword and sees that everybody's you know, done, big and stuff, she's gonna clap her hands together and say, "So nice to meet all of you. My name is Oliana." Nice to meet you. I'm Ezio. Scout and assassin. Darius uh, looks at his rifle and doesn't really look up, look in anyone's eyes yet. He's just uh, um, uh, Darius. 
And what do you do? I was a guard, uh, a guardsman. Yeah, no, it was not here. <laughs> she she looks at the other two before her answering that too. I mean, she look actually she looks at Jenny. She clearly sees she's a. <laughs> Are you an engineer by any chance? No. <laughs> And I remember every day I had to face this humiliation. <laughs> so you are an engine seer. <laughs> Henry comes, uh, Hector comes round. Warning, warning. Idiot detected. Mordecai just kind of stifles a laugh. I then... would advise you to quit it. I am your medic medicinal professional, after all. Yeah, that's not the best of them. It's a shame day. if some of your non-critical organs were to suffer damage. Under my breath, I think that kind is fighting. <laughs> Liliana's gonna raise her hand. Ah, uh, yeah, hey, okay, would that come with a replacement too? Touchy subject, I see, I see. So, so, um, what is your name? My name is Jenny Lanius of the Brotherhood of Mars. Who? A Martian <laughs> Tech priest. Tech priest. Have your stuff. She's gonna straight away look at the last one and say, and what about you? What's your name? I'm, uh, I'm Mordecai. Uh, formerly of, uh, of I, I guess formerly of the Astro Telepathica. Oh. Just being a bit um, kind of nervous around all the new people. Um, and he's going to try and summon a little flame to see if uh, <laughs> he's just, just to kind of show off a little bit. Um, but he's probably going to fail because I suck at rolling Does everything. the guardsman start sweating and looking for the commissar? <laughs> sweating profusely, <laughs> clasping his rifle. <laughs> oh wow, just about got it. Yeah, just. I told you, my rolls are horrendous all the time. Uh, <laughs> so he just manages a weak little, little flame in front of him. Oh, very nice. Just going to give a, a small clap. <laughs> Me too. But I'm not going to show what I can do just yet. So you were the one I sensed earlier. Probably, yes. <laughs> Darius she's gonna... is very concerned. <laughs> she's going to put a, a hand on her face to block everybody else except Mordecai. And she's going to approach closer. I can read minds. That's more than I can do. You're very skilled. <laughs> She's gonna go back this one. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to meet all of you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Greetings. Well then, how about we all go to the cantina for a nice meal before we actually have to head off? Sounds like we'll get better. F we'll likely get better food here than we will down on the surface. Oh, the sign sure. of Rob, I'm uh, very, I'm very uh, keen on that. <laughs> so you all make your way to uh, the canteen. Um, Mm, do, do, do. Let me think. So, can we pick up some food along the way? Yeah, you can go down to the canteen. Um, I'm wondering if... No, they probably would have still kept you going to the same place. So you go down to the, the same canteen that you've been going down to for weeks now. Um, there's a constant hustle and bustle um, in here. There's, It's never 
not empty. There are always some peoples whose meal time is up. Um, it's their turn to come and eat. And you don't get particularly long. Um, fortunately, with your position on the ship, um, you are easily able to join onto any meal time um, and go and get some grub. Um, it's not great. It's 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 free pilgrim food, so it's pretty pretty terrible. Um, it's probably a step up from from nutrient paste. No, no, it probably isn't. Is nutrient paste? Yeah. If it's civilian relief rations, that's uh, that's recycled crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, their, uh, their toilets on, on the ship are probably hooked up to the kitchen. They probably are. You are eating nutrient paste, so yeah, yeah. You probably all. Jenny is kind of used to nutrient paste because the tech mechanicus don't really concern themselves with that. True. Very true. Um, Darius doesn't the, mean the she like header. it. She's just used to it. You probably Paris could have all taken Paris. your recaf with you. Okay. Uh, Darius is, for the first time, uh, missing combat rations in his life. Which are probably actually the same thing, but just a little bit better. <laughs> you all go in, you grab your, uh, you grab your uh, meal tray and you go up to the dispenser and you are given this lovely greyish green slop that kind of just oozes out into a puddle. You would note that for whatever reason, your cards that you use to, to swipe your identity seems to give you a little bit more. You get a little bit more slop than the people around you. Yay. So you find a reasonably uncrowded table. For some reason, you're not quite sure, but there seem to be a lot of tables that are five-seaters. You look at them and you think, well, surely you could get another chair sat on the back there to make it six, but okay. Um, and somehow, a bit of luck, you find there's a five-seater available for your group. Ooh. How serendipitous. <laughs> you know, right? We found a nice cozy spot. <laughs> she's gonna take a seat and then she's gonna start eating. She doesn't mind a nutrient pace at all. <laughs> probably yeah, Mordecai's probably used to it by this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been six weeks. Yeah, yeah. You're you're used to it. You see, um, as you look around, you can see a lot of uh, individuals who are excited, who are scared, who are just anxious, who are just still, after all this time, still destroyed that they've had to leave everything behind. Um, but there are a few individuals who seem to be seeing the, uh, the upside to all of this. Um... Do we, when we walk around the ship, do we notice anything odd? Not particularly. Um, it's a it's a ministerium pilgrim ship. Uh, there's a lot of praying going on. There's a lot of preaching to the god emperor. Um, but you haven't noticed anything um, anything amiss with uh, with the ship. In fact, you're quite surprised how few riots you've heard. Um, and how few um, problems there have been on ship. Uh, you do see a lot of ship um, officers walking around. There's a lot of crewmen walking around, and that could be why. Um... So you you all have something to eat on uh, on your table. Um, do you want to discuss anything here, uh, or do you want to just? Quickly eat and go somewhere else. Um, I'm not busy. It's there's still the possibility of praying ears. 
So if there's any conversation, I would recommend it be uh, just casual. We're more getting to know each other a little bit better. Hmm. I mean, Adriana does want to ask people things and talk to people. But again, like like he said, this is probably not the best place to say things. Especially like, oh, where are you from? Everybody's going to go like, mm -hmm. same place you were. Remember? <laughs> yeah. It was everyone. War zone, we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> just, just going to eat and, and see if people are, you know, get people used to eating with each other so they can, you know. Okay, so you've established out. yourself as, as a group. Um, you'd notice that there have been cliques forming um, as you've been eating and you've noticed individuals that have started to group up. Um, so it's not, it, it's something you've already seen quite a lot of anyway. Um, so... It's quite common. Um, you all have your food and perhaps just a couple of words of, you know, light conversation before a bell goes and you notice that a lot of people get up and it's their turn to eat has ended. Um, quickly slop up your, uh, your slop um, and make your way out. Um, I forgot to mention, you do have the office. You can use that as much as you want. Um, you have your quarters that are all private um, and then you have the chronicalarium which isn't private but everyone in there is of high enough um, high enough rank that they're not going to ask questions they know that people will be going in there and looking up stuff okay Mordecai's probably going to spend most of his time in in the chronic calarium. It's a weird word to say. <laughs> it really is. It really is. I already spent a long time learning how to say it. Um, just trying to learn more really about the planet we're going to. Um, just general research because that's kind of his thing. <laughs> It's how is how it's what makes him feel nice and at home. Okay. Uh, Darius will try and stick with the group. He's been told these guys are his brothers and sisters, so uh, that's his order basically. So he's going to stick with them. I stick with them most of most at the same time. Uh, if, again, if no one's speaking to Liliana, she's just going to be humming and uh, basically bouncing around the ship as she walks, you know, brushing her hand along the wall. How long did we do why, that? Why did we have to, why did our rogue psycho have to be a fucking caffeinated squirrel? <laughs> she's not, she's not a rogue psycho. She's not actually a rogue psycho. psycho. You're a, ca <laughs> sorry, still, you're a caffeinated squirrel. <laughs> She's just happy. Um, when we have private time or uh, time to ourselves as a group, uh, I would ask, what what do you think uh, we should be doing then uh, for this making this money? Uh, I'm not exactly uh, well versed in work I mean, outside of the guard. There are multiple things we could be doing. I mean, did you notice that there was a debris uh, field? If we eventually get our hands on a transport ship, we could go there and loot the place of all goodies we can find and sell it. Or we could start well, stealing things. <laughs> There's Does also anyone the... even know how to pilot a vessel? Ah, uh, look at the Mechanicus. Look at the Mechanicus. <laughs> if I knew, I wouldn't have asked, would I? 
you just feel the stare from across the ship going through all of the bulkheads of me staring at the mechanic as his way. <laughs> well, yeah, we, I'm sure one of us can have a in head. Oh, we could just, you know, find someone to drive us there. I mean, I'm anyway, a too. guardsman, not a naval man, so. There's also the good old... How oh, hard can it be? Very. Oh, if you sorry. disrespect the machine spirit, it will have dire consequences for all of us. So are you guys in the office, or are you talking whilst you're walking um, to the Chronicalarium? I'm assuming this conversation started in the office, after we are already alone somewhere. We can, you know, speak openly. Sure, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mordecai, would you go with the group... Or would you go to the Chronicalarium uh, on your own? Um, he'd probably spend most of the time in the Chronicalarium on his own, but probably be with the group right now as we get closer to try and decide what to do. Sure, okay. So you're all in the office together. You're all discussing what you can do um, on World. Shall the ship perks up again? There is also the tried and true tradition of racketeering. She looks at the rest of the people, smiling brightly. Hmm. And how exactly do you propose we start this racketeering? Well, simple. We find a, a place, a sector of the other hive, where there aren't really any powerful gangs. If there is a tiny gang, we kill them. Whoever survives, we make them work for us, and we take over the, the their sector. So we go to the stores, and we tell them how rough the place is, and maybe if they want it, they could you know pay us to be safe. And if they don't pay us, well, we'll beat the living shit out of them and break some of their store items, and then we come back later. She's still smiling the entire time. <laughs> Do you... mm, interesting. Don't you think it would be easier to take over a guy? I believe that was what was just suggested. Mm, yeah, that, that, that's precisely what I suggested. <laughs> uh -huh. Sorry. You have some psychers with us uh the standard person and he, he just looks at, at at the what um whoever it was i think it was, was it liliana that was a bit afraid when he showed himself to be a psyker no it was darius oh is it darius yeah. <laughs> okay i will get people's names straight by the second episode <laughs> Sorry, not. Um, I just kind of say, the yeah, they, they tend to be scared of us. Precisely. We can tell them that if they don't do what they, we want them to do, she points at, at one guy and like, he's going to burn their children alive. <laughs> Still smiling the entire the Aquila, time. Whispering a little prayer under, under his voice, and his eyes closed, slowly rocking back and forth. Or and they if... send witch hunters after you, oh, which, please. all things considered, would be highly counterproductive. Oh, you are sanctioned, right? Do you, do you really expect? Do you really expect witch hunters to come to the low hive where there are a bunch of hustlers and con artists? Yes, it yes. is in their job description. Also, those low lives might become the witch hunters. Remember. No matter the upbringing, the tithes must be fulfilled. Hey, I, I know that part, but you know, we, we've not, done our How tithes. widespread is the knowledge about the black ships? Um, Jenny, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I, tell me if I'm speaking out of turn, because... I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that pretty much everyone knows that psychers are tithed yeah. to the Imperium. Um, yeah, it's but... not restricted knowledge to know that psychers are part of the tithe 
Um, pretty much everyone knows that psychers give their lives willingly um, for the God Emperor. They might not know that they're fed to the Golden Throne. <laughs> um, but you'd know of them, uh, and you'd know that they do collect tithes. And as the Mechanicus, you would know that tithes have to be paid. Um, Ministor, uh, is it Ministorum? Um, but the Munitorum, the, pay, the pen pushers. Adeptus. Administratum? Administratum, that's the one. Administratum. Um, they would, on their worlds, they would probably be the types to be able to change the numbers, fudge the books a little bit easier if needed. Um, but for the Mechanicus, they're pretty. You want a thousand las guns? Here are a thousand las guns. <laughs> you wanted extra? You should have asked. That was not. Re that was not uh, requisitioned. Yep. I mean, it's kind of expected to calculate your attrition in in the requisition. Exactly. That's why I always order five clips of ammo. Then again, not everyone has Creek Quartermasters as bookkeepers. <laughs> true, very, very um, true. Wouldn't the Arctic Creek spike? Wait, no, it's the normal soldiers. The Quartermasters are past the stage of everything by the book. I'm what? not entirely sure that every regiment has quartermasters like the creeds. No quartermasters. Are... Well, no, I know Krieg. that the creeds. Who soldiers? In Krieg is uh, very specific to that regiment. Like other regiments have quartermasters, but they're very different from Krieg quartermasters. Yeah, Krieg, Krieg, Krieg quartermasters Krieg. are the ones who get the uh, bodies Krieg, back. Quartermaster in Krieg is like a first step of an NCO I think no it's the yeah. first actual officer rank sorry yeah first actual officer rank yeah they uh, live long enough to they are quartermaster is the equivalent of an actual quartermaster and a medic yeah and by medic I mean the guy that shoots you in the head because you're not well enough to get to the medical table well they do rescue some people well yeah Go like back to the forces like... at the creek like flesh wounds, get back on your feet. Missing a leg, bang. Too much for a for a mechanical. You know they're not. They're not. Mm. Don't like, they send uh, amputees no. back to? Like no, if you go back no. to Cree as an amputee, you were the lowest scum in the galaxy. You because were spat you on. Failed. Yeah, you you failed to die. Instead, you're taking up valuable resources so that you can do uh, nothing. You waste of like, space. If that, if that oh, they were was actually to happen, Amputy would no. be expected by the Kriegans to just kill himself. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. Must Krieg... have misunderstood that part of the fit then. Yeah, Krieg is very, very harsh. But anyway, we're not on, on Krieg. So... Sacrifice for the Emperor. <laughs> well, you should do sacrifice. That. I mean, you're right, they might send witches, but they probably receive people complaining about witches and saucers everywhere all the time. So, but to, you know, put you at ease, we cannot always just beat the losing shit out of them, and that's fine. Question. Do you sense other witches and psychers? So, yes Liliana, no, you does. would know that the ones who run the black ships are the Astra Telepathica, and the ones who hunt down rogue psychers are the Astra Telepathica. Yeah. So, um, this might be a bit of an insensitive question, but do you know the bounty on the rogue psychers? Or a known psychers? I don't know if you would know about rogue psychers, you know about psychers. Well, actually, no, you wouldn't mean you, you would know. That... No, you would know. You would have heard stories. There's there's enough stories of rogue psychers. Officers of maces, or however they are called in the, in the comments mode. Suffer not the witch to live. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, how do you know the bounty? Me. Do you know if there is bounty on them and how much? I well, the thing is, if you're not handing over rogue psychers, you're considered to be hoarding psychers, which is punishable by death. 
So I guess the, the the reward for handing over a psyker is not being killed for not handing over a psyker. So exactly. there might be a case for the Astra Telepathica to either hire in a mercenary team um, who deal with, you know, assisting the Telepathica by lending muscle, or it would be down to them uh, uh, requisitioning guardsmen, um, or inquisitorial age uh, inquisitorial um stormtroopers possibly depending on what psyker it is um if it's a oh i can't remember the names if it's an alpha the inquisition get called if it's a rogue alpha then it's um then it's uh ordo hereticus that get called in I'm pretty sure if you're a rogue alpha you just get shot on sight yes yeah. yeah um there are a lot yeah. of there are a lot of books of um Cyphus Kane going after rogue psychers. I think it was Cyphus Kane, um, who was an alpha who could do all sorts of mental shit. Was it Cyphus? It might have been a different Inquisition Inquisitor actually. Um, um, isn't Cyphus Kane the? I think you're thinking of Eisenhorn because sorry, Kane Eisenhorn, is sorry. the commissar. Yeah, Eisenhorn. Eisenhorn sorry. is the, the, the Inquisitor, and after Eisenhorn, I think it's Ravenhorn, which is the other. I yes. Guess. Yes, but I can't I remember which story it's from. The, ch the chart anywhere. Anyway, this isn't a, this isn't a chat about um, about <laughs> cooks. Uh, you wouldn't be. It would be very yeah. unlikely for you to get bounty work going after psychers. Um, that's a real specialist department of uh, yeah. government. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, there goes yeah. my quickerish scheme. You can't. Mercenaries are a thing in forty k. Again, oh, yeah. not so much for the guard, uh, but private hire mercenaries for nobles and things like that. That's perfectly fine. Um, even for underhive, you know, uh, for the enforcers, they would sometimes hire um, hire mercenaries. So, and... just for the record, we were allowed to hunt down nobles, right? Albi, I'm giving you free reign to go and buy a woman no, and no, no, pimp her I'm out. No, 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 I'm you have complete yeah, I know. authority. As a player, I know as a player, I'm talking about what the dude said. Yeah, he said if you want, like this is the authority he has given you. If you want, you can go and assassinate um, nobility or other nobility as a hitman. It wouldn't look great on your on your um, on your. Uh, on your report that you destabilized the hive city by helping the nobility rise in rank but it is you can do it um i'm not going to stop you i um, mean if you destabilize it it means you didn't do a clean enough job well no it what? normally means you worked for the wrong person because you went for the easy money rather than the individual who was like no i want to better the hive but i can't pay you went yeah i'll you know ten ten thousand thrones Take his ass out. Happy days. Yeah. Here's the. Here's the, here's the welcome problem, to a new politician. Welcome to your politician. Yeah. Here's a problem, though, my good assassin. We're supposed to be civilians in the lowest part of the lowest part of the hive. I'm pretty sure no nobody's gonna look at us and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna trust this low life with a bounty kill." Or if I hit job, we have to work our way up. So, if you expect us to get super rich in the first month, mm. I don't know. You got a fair few thousand thrones. You know, you could buy a lot of women for that money. <laughs> we would. I oh, get syphilis the first day. I don't, don't think around. that we will uh, get rewarded for it. You don't try your own stash, you know. You let other people do that, and then when you get complaints, just slap yeah. the bitch for being a dirty hoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do that in real life. <laughs> I shouldn't need to say that, but just just to put up there, all for comedy, all for the laughs. Don't actually hit people. <laughs> yeah. Life tips. Don't be a like, dick. Unless they deserve it. You never, you never, you never play with your own stash. Don't do that. <laughs> I Don't would get say high on your own supply. I would say count yeah. to ten because you may hit them, and you still get fucked for it. <laughs> well, that's been my experience. 
Violence has only oh, double uh, backfired. Except for in role play games, that's when it works the best. In, in, anyway, my, my good assassin, sir, what we have to do is start from the bottom and now we, we go up. Stop. So he, here's the deal we start a small king to both of us as the leaders and we work our way up. Then we have prostitution, gambling, racketeering. Drugs, guns, we can do all of that. And if we get big enough, we can even start on his job. Maybe you could try to claim to end the drive. Become the king thinks. Yeah, something along those lines. You are entirely too cheerful about this prospect. Am I? Hmm. Yes. I have no, I have no hmm. Well, it's we do need to work below the big guns to get 250k drums in six months. It is possible. All we have to do is you know, mm. work our way up. Mechanicus, do you have an idea how much a uh, ship is worth? <laughs> <laughs> no. As I said, my focus was not never on the that you're supposed to know, not, 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 not a While I am <laughs> of the Mechanicus, I have devoted myself to the disciplines of the flesh. You know, I thought you, you were an engine seer. You know, Mr. Assassin, don't touch that subject, she's touching. You know, Mr. Assassin, that's actually a little bit racist. No, all Mechanicus are, you know, the same. You should ponder more your words. Well, do I all wrote in the scope then. Do any of you guys know how much a ship is worth? Billions of thrones. Billions upon billions upon billions of thrones. And I'm not even joking. So what we need to do is privateer a ship. Um, do you know how frame uh, plant some superficial evidence for a rogue trader claiming ship? Send it to the soon to another rogue trader. Boom, requirements met. Again, Mr. Assassin, do you know how massive a ship is? Do you know how many people uh, live? 500 in meters on the uh, 500. Okay, <laughs> now. A kilometer no. on uh, 500 no. meters. Kilometers. Uh, Five uh, kilometers. Weren't the rogue traders tinier? <laughs> No, <laughs> no. There are small ships, Albie, um, but the idea of you guys being able to get a ship is the same idea as 40k actually becoming real life. Um, it, it, it's way out of your league. Um, we can hire transport, but that's about it. Like, hire ten, transport for a, a journey. 10,000 thrones to travel within a system, I think, or to the next system. Um, yeah, it's a lot. yeah, we're not doing that. You guys, well, you need to look to the lower sections. Like, if you want to get loot, you can always go into the underhive and explore because the underhive does have treasures locked away down there. Um, yeah, bloody dangerous though. Bloody dangerous. Um, you could make drugs. You could make food. Um, there are billions of underhivers. You um, scrape the fungus off a dead man's foot, you know, get that fungus in a stew, Do chuck a bit of the meat in there as well. the planet's policy on gangs? You'd need to look that up. Can I look that up? Uh, not right at this minute. Um, you're all chatting. It isn't on the data slate? No, it wouldn't. The, the data slate has nothing on it. That's just there for your input. Um, you can go and look it up, um, but make a note of it. And because you guys went to the office, there's no cognates in the office. This is just a, a meeting room. Um, in the chroniclearium, you can look up all the documents you need. But that's not, you know, people come and go out of the chroniclearium. Yes, they're of high enough rank to keep their mouth shut, but it's not exactly 100% private. I mean, I'll, I'll give you this, most policies on gangs 
is if you stay in the scummy areas, we don't care. Oh, it's so basically, common. rule the underworld for all, rule the underworld for all we care, but don't bring your mess outside. Pretty much. Um, uh, there are a few hive worlds that are exceptions, uh, Necromunda being one of them. Um, but in the most part, every hive has gangs in the lower and um, under hives. It's just the the mid hive. It's just kind of the lower hive, mid hive, and up. They want peace wherever possible, so people can get to work and do the shit that they need to do. Whereas in the again, the lower hive is broken up into two areas. There's the upper lower hive, and there's the lower lower hive. Um, it's a bit confusing, but the closer you get to the shittier areas, the more dangerous it is. The more gangs there are. But then even the nobles need prostitutes. So I don't mean to go back to this. Even the nobles <laughs> need drugs. Um, so there are gangs that work for the nobility, that, you know, service the nobility. But you have to get in pretty good with them. Do we know how to claim gangs? Yeah, you beat the living shit, break their hierarchy, and then take over. Yes, technically it's not as easy as that, but technically yes, that is the procedure. Um, so, get them in one room, snipe them from afar, and then name yourself boss, is what you're seeing. Probably not that No, because then that would, that would just mean they were just assassinated by someone. There's no way to put you as the guy that killed them, because you just sniped them. It, it's I mean, one of those. Sure you guys can be closer. You can kill them. Um, any gang that you encounter, you could just try and beat the shit out of. Um, you, I'll give you this knowledge for free. You would know that some gangs are better off than others, um, depending on who they're attached to, what deals they've done, what um, area of racketeering they have. Um, and they could be funded by a noble house. True. That's one of them. Um, it could be that they are just so, like, they control all the prostitution, drugs, and gambling. So they're a particularly big gang that has a lot of um, a lot of uh, people in the gang and um, property that they control. Um, but then again, there are hundreds of gangs in the underhive, all fighting for control and beating the shit out of each other, and so. Generally, until you get on world, you probably won't know of types of gangs. Um, they don't really list them. Um, but they are definitely there, and you would know just of common knowledge that they genuinely hang out in the underhives and the lower part of the lower hive um, and do their violence. But they can be found throughout doing other things. Like um, Liliana said, like blackmailing people and racketeering and such forth. I mean, it may even reach that point where we can just approach a person and say, you know, you do something for me. You ask something for me. And later on down the line, we're going to have to ask something out of you that you cannot refuse. So we create bonds with people. And, you know, some, after a while, people may actually see our racketeering operation as actually beneficial for them. Because if we're kind to people, they may actually, you know, fall in line better. But if they fuck with us, we'll put a gun to their head and blow up their brains. So, what do you guys think? She says, smiling. I agree with the gang plan. I'm a little concerned, mainly because I've spent most of my years protecting Imperial citizens, and now I'm going to be uh, harassing them. You see, that's the part where it all it makes it even better, because you actually help us keep our morality. That is, until you break and you start having well, to work. we can. Do you not know who we're... You realise who we're working for? They protect us as well we may not yeah. know how but doing however we do it will protect people 
Yeah, also, good. if we take out the other gangs, we can make a more stable gang rule. That too. For instance, if we, we make it a, one organization, we need it. Make them loyal to the Inquisition. The Inquisition will be glad. You see, that over there is no bueno. I do not Weird. believe the Inquisition would be happy if we were to yeah. flaunt her our allegiance. Here's the thing. Yeah. No, 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 no. We had, when our mission is done, we hand over control of our organization to the Inquisition. That way we can give them more. We can give them their money that they want. And we can give them a very strong influence on the planet. Here's the thing. It enables them to raise their stable income. It, we it's are... Fun. Position, though. It is fine for them to give us money, it's fine for the Inquisition to receive money from the gangs, but it's not a good idea for the gang to know they're working for the Inquisition. I never said we would tell them. I mean, surely the Inquisition can put some puppets in place. Okay. I think we should keep the gang idea as a one, of, one of them, maybe plan B, but see if there's any other more legal things to do when we get there. Mm -hmm. That's just Darius's idea. I mean, we could also use our gang to start exploring the Underhive. Rebuild it. For a price, of course. That is... I do not believe rebuilding the Underhive is remotely within our realm of possibility. I'm pretty sure I everyone mean... knows that uh, Adeptus Arbites roll in there get like a mile in and then have to retreat because they waste all the ammo already. I mean, we could clean them up. Yeah, it, it would be kind I of like a I do not think you understand the monumentality of what you propose. You're basically asking the Emperor one to come does, back. One does not simply clean the Underhive. Had it been done, Mars would already have been restored to its former glory before the great heresy it's kind of like us at our current state mm. buying this entire planet it's uh, yeah. a bit beyond our powers imagine trying to clean the deck of the emperor class battleship with nothing but a manual broom i mean we can make our can big enough um, so think of the, this, our current feasible. world's population, um, so something bil trillion, no, what are we in now, billions? A billion. Yeah. Yeah, the billions. All Seven of billion. those people in one city, that's, that's a hive city. What you're um, asking is an unfeasible task, like, you would, you would be asking the Emperor to come down and go, okay, sort yourselves out, and then it all magically happens, that's just lot, that's more likely to happen than us just making a gang and cleaning everything up. You can make pockets of stability, so there are gangs out there that work for the betterment of the, the people surrounding them. So they've come in, taken out a gang that would beat and abuse the citizens, and they take over for a while. And if they can hold on to control with, you know, gambling, slight drugs, alcohol, fighting rings, um, there are legal ways to make money, but it's like the grey area. Um, and they will try to make sure that the streets are safe enough so business can be done, that, you know, in their pocket, in their um, turf, on their turf, it is safe. Um, everyone does pay a little price for that, either in protection money or buying goods from that particular gang. Um, but yeah, trying to cleanse the entire underhive it's just not doable um at this stage uh you gotta think it's like a pyramid of people the bottom of the pyramid being the underhive has the most number of people so yeah you could help a few hundred thousand but your arm would get tired if you tried to cleanse them all out of character i'm basically trying to say that we should probably become like the Godfather, we, we should become. Yeah, more. I'm yeah. thinking of that too. Mafia. Basically yeah. building a, a underhive kingdom of the Inquisition. Mm. Yeah. 
I mean, I was hoping to buy a share in a chop shop. <laughs> you need to oh, think, Pete. But you, you come here with all of these grandiose plans we have no ways of accomplishing. Yeah, you know, you know we need to get 250k drones. 250k. Hey, it's, you need not, those. it's not actually Emperor that much. Emperor didn't build Terra overnight, you know. It's not actually that much when you think of how many people there are in the Underhive. You need a throne off 1% of them. <laughs> not even. So basically what we need to do is go on a rampage through the Underhive. Uh, like, I I've set this up so you could genuinely sell food to the Underhivers to make your money. Um, or any of the listed above. Um, I mean, could be a part of our gang. Join us and you get food. Look at the other. It's just a bit too far out of what we can do. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be in the low hive. The hive is a bit too much. I mean, we can buy our, we can buy up some. Uh, how much would an agriculture company cost? <laughs> You're thinking way, way, way too high, dude. <laughs> way out of reach. Oh my god. So, like Jenny's idea of paying into a into a chop shop, for example, that's possible. Um, the idea of you guys setting up a doctor's, um, you know, making your own drugs and helping the people that way is possible. Um, you yeah. might have to vent, uh, venture into the underhive, for example, to get raw ingredients, because um, there are funguses, there are other biological um, biological matter down there that you can, you know, break down into its components and then turn it into medicine. Um, that's all possible. Um, buying any established business um, is again impossible. Um, that's one of those things where, yeah, if the Inquisitor came down and bitch slapped the owner with his Rosarius, yeah, he could do it. Um, you guys, like 250,000 thrones, wouldn't even get you a 0.01% a share in it. <laughs> Here's the thing. The thing I'm thinking out of character is if it's establish a territory, we could start doing things like, for instance, we open a back, back room doctor shop where uh, Jenny can save criminal people from, you know, bullet wounds and stuff like that. Or we can start selling, you know, drugs, a little bit of those. We can, you know, make backroom gambling bands and stuff like that and work our way up. <laughs> Going straight out into agriculture in the street. As, 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 as fun as those deliberations are, I kind of have to go now. Okay, no Early worries, dude. Tomorrow. So, our group have decided on a plan. They want to go along the gang side. So, write down in your notes that next time you want to look into gang um, activities on the world or Arbite reports on things, um, what the food situation is like, what the resource situation is like. Next time, these questions will be answered. But for now, this is the first episode of... Dark Heresies, uh, blended first and second edition, Inquisitorial Profiteers. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to the next episode, which we will try to keep at around the same times. Um, and if you are listening, then perhaps you would like to see the Warhammer Fantasy game that I'll be running on Thursday, starting at 7 GMT. Where no. we are certainly not playing Hive City Tycoon. Yeah. No, you're not, but you are in a city. Actually, that I would, I would play the heck of that, that game. You <laughs> would just make gangs and rob everyone. That would actually, developers, you have another idea out there. You you're just, just need to a get GWs. governor to try to put out fires before like a full chaos rebellion starts. Oh, you could do something. it you could do it two ways. You could do it multiple playthroughs. Have it as your deep planetary governor, have it as your middle hiver, lower hiver, the gang the have mutants trying to imitate Gene Stiller patriarch. Oh, I'm looking to get the license. 
So, <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed, and if you did, you can always catch the VODs over at my YouTube channel, which is Dyslexic Gamer something. Um, I think it's just Dyslexic Gamer. So, with nothing else to say other than take care, everyone, and as always, bye-bye for now. Bye. 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 Yeah.